What's going on guys? I'm Mario from Wired Workshop and today we're going to be making a Halo Fusion Coil phone charger. There's two big reasons on why I put this whole thing together in the first place. One being I have phone charger stand that I wanted on top of my desk and then also a way to display and also preserve this really old Halo 3 Mountain Dew can that I had. Now I've had this Mountain Dew can since 2007 and I've kept it in really good condition. I honestly can't tell you why other than the fact that I think it looks really cool and it also takes me back to when I would run home from school. Uh, pop in Halo 3 into my Xbox, grab the classic Mountain Dew and Dorito combo, and then just play some games with my buddies. So I chose the Fusion Core because it serves as an energy source inside of the game, mainly used to blow up enemies if they're standing next to it, but I figured why not scale that down to make it look like a power supply that could charge my phone. On the other hand, I wanted it to look like it could fit into the Halo universe. So say there was someone who worked a desk job for the UNSC, and this would serve as their like power station on top of their desk where they can plug things into, charge their phone, and also even have a little time clock to tell the time. I realize having the Mountain Dew can inside of the fusion coil kind of takes away from that aspect, but that was just my fun little twist on the project. The first thing was to do was get the Mountain Dew can encased inside of the resin. I used some three inch PVC as the mold and then hot glued that down to this AZEC board. That way it would keep all the resin inside. Now, since I only had the one Halo 3 can, I decided to use a bunch of normal ones as cannon fodder almost until I got the whole resin process right. Now, since my can was already open from way back when, I decided to mimic that same thing Thing and then try to reseal a normal one and then see what happened when I poured resin over top of it. You'll see this was a terrible idea because what I just did was made a buoy. I didn't really start with much of a plan. I even started mixing pigments in uh, to the resin to get a yellow tint, kind of like the fusion coil has. But I never even got that far with my first test because the hot glue came unhinged from the AZAC board, which left me with a huge mess of resin all over my table. And here became the many setbacks I had on this project. Okay, try number two. I obviously didn't learn from the first time not to leave air in the can, but at least this time I glued it down, so hopefully it wouldn't rise up. I poured some more resin, then made this weird handle out of scrap wire, that way I can pick it up by that instead of the mold and then carry it over to the pressure pot. Then I waited two days just to find that the can had floated to the top anyway and then got crushed by the pressure. A quick note on the pressure pot, you actually hook up an air compressor to this thing, and what that does is creates a bunch of pressure in this one area, and that forces all the bubbles in the resin after you pour it down so small that you can't see it and that way you don't have any bubbles in your finished product. The downside is if the can floats up it gets totally crushed which is a good reason I'm using these cans instead of the Halo 3 one because if that happened to that I would somewhat be devastated. Okay try number three surely the dirt will stop it from getting crushed and floating to the top or maybe not but at least this time it stayed inside of the resin. Okay, it was finally time to just pour resin inside of the empty can. I was trying to avoid this to waste on material, but judging by test number four, it was definitely the way to go. I actually changed one thing in the process up to this point, and that was to pour resin in the can before it even made it to the mold or the pressure pot. This way, there was no chance of that Halo can getting crushed. Once the resin inside the can was totally solid, I went ahead and poured more around it and then into the pressure pot it went. I waited three days before I took it out just to be totally safe, and to my surprise, it came out perfect. Of course, it did take a lot of sanding and polishing to get it to how it looks now, but after all the tests and everything I went through just to get this one can, it was well worth it. Next, I needed a way to spin the can with a motor, so I 3D printed this piece to attach the two. I drilled tiny holes into the resin, that way I could use cut off screws and glue them in place to act as studs, that way I can mount that 3D printed piece on there. I used Fusion 360 to model up the Fusion Coil as well as the phone stand, and from there I took the models and sent them to my 3D printers to be made. 
I tried to print with really fine lines to help with detail as well as sanding time, but that also means that everything's gonna take a little bit longer to print, especially the phone stand, which took up to three days. Once all the pieces were finished, I moved on to sanding, followed by some spot putty to fill any cracks, more sanding, and then a couple coats of filler primer. The next step was to actually put the whole fusion coil together. So that meant putting some of the LED strips in as well as getting the wires fished in from the top and bottom. CA glue was definitely my friend here because that allowed for some really quick dry times. For the finished paint of this project, I used all clad inside of my airbrush. First I put down a black base and then I followed that up with some of their metallic to try to match what the fusion coil looks like in the game. Airbrushing and painting is definitely not my strong suit. Usually Ryan or my good friend Ashley will do that for the projects that I've worked on in the past. But I wanted to give this one a shot because I didn't think it would be too difficult and I think it turned out pretty good. Now onto my favorite part which is putting all the pieces together and connecting all the wires. Now the way this all works is when I place my phone on the stand, it sends power to the motor for it to spin the can and then also for the lights to kick on. Also, once the phone's on the stand, it gets charged up by a wireless charger that's mounted behind it on the plastic. Originally, I was concerned that there would be too much of a gap between the phone and the phone charger with that plastic, but to my surprise, it even charged the phone with my case on. And for the last finishing touch, I put a UNSC sticker on the stand. With that, the project was done and everything worked like I planned. Until it didn't. Turns out I really underestimated how hot that motor would get and it actually started to melt the plastic where it was being held. I ended up having to cut that plastic away, make a new motor mount out of metal, and then also mount a fan underneath to try to help keep that area cool. Since that fan was mounted underneath, I needed to elevate this whole thing. So I 3D printed these stands for it to go on. Even though this was a really quick solution, I did not like how this looked at all. So I, I went back to the drawing board. I ended up going with a time clock because I thought that really fit into the whole desk vibe that I was going for, for someone who worked an office job for the UNSC. So I gutted the whole thing, figure out what parts I needed to make the time and hours still programmable on the clock. Then I printed out a stand that would hold the time clock, the buttons to program it, and some extra buttons, as well as another USB port to charge a phone with a wire. Once all the paint was dry, I can go ahead and glue on the new stand, and then just put all the pieces together again. I also stream live on YouTube and Twitch doing projects like this, so if you're interested, I would love to see you stop by. And all that was left now was to put some stickers on that my friend Ashley made me. As many hiccups as I had on this project, I still had a lot of fun making it. The coolest thing to me is that it actually functions as a phone charger, shows the time, and the best thing of all showcases the Mountain Dew can that reminds me of a really cool time in my childhood. If you're interested on making something similar to this, I actually have some of the 3D files available on my Thingiverse page. Some future projects that I am working on is working on a stasis tank for my pet alien, as well as making a frame for some old video game cases that you might have laying around. I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you haven't already be sure to like and subscribe it would really help out the channel and with that i'll see you guys next time